Welcome back to Progressive Devilry. I'm your host, Stella. Sorry, this video took longer than I anticipated. And the crucial piece of equipment I was missing was this wig. As you may know, Wenatchee was snowed in last week and it delayed the delivery of my colonial hairdo. And it was absolutely imperative that I have it for the filming of the First Amendment piece. So anyway. Today, we are going to talk about the First Amendment. Locally and across the country, there seems to be a misunderstanding of this particular amendment regarding free speech. It's true that you can say whatever your cold, dead heart desires in the good old US of A, but that doesn't mean that people still have to have respect for you afterwards or that there won't be real world consequences Take some of these local examples, one expressing anger at the local hospital for following health guidelines and mandates, and the ever popular Let's Go Brandon, which, if you didn't know, is super covert code for fuck Biden. That one I understand less, because if you want to say fuck Biden, then why don't you just say it? Are you scared? You know that saying fuck Biden is legal, right? That it is protected under the First Amendment. So adding in some not so secret code phrase is just asinine. A lot of people, including a local attorney who is currently the legislative representative to the Wenatchee School Board, has misrepresented the First Amendment by equating it with refusing to comply with a mandate to wear masks during a worldwide pandemic. It's an open public meeting. It's kind of like a, a, a public forum, as you will. A group showed up wanting to exercise their First Amendment right to, to be unmasked. Being unmasked is not protected under the First Amendment, Julie. Nationally, even elected representatives of our government are misrepresenting the actual meaning of the First Amendment in regards to private corporations. <laughs> I'll say it again real quick. You can say whatever you want. But that doesn't mean people have to listen. And there are real world consequences for what you say. I'll probably go over every aspect of this amendment in the future, but today we're only going to focus on the freedom of speech aspect. The, in my opinion, purposeful misrepresentation of the First Amendment by some people in powerful leadership positions needs to be addressed. It seems like a lot of people equate freedom of speech with freedom from consequences. As we'll go over, freedom of speech literally just means the government can't detain you for what you say under very specific circumstances determined through nearly 250 years of legal precedent. You can, in fact, be arrested for what you say, though it just depends on the situation whether or not you'll be convicted. The full amendment is as follows. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. So what we are focusing on is Congress shall make no law abridging freedom of speech. The word abridge means to cut short or curtail in this sense. This is later clarified in the hundreds of First Amendment cases which set the legal precedent. One of the earliest examples of curtailing freedom of speech is in 1819, State v. Gruber, where Reverend Jacob Gruber, a Methodist minister, spoke to a crowd of between 3,000 to 5,000 in August of 1818. 
Gruber spoke out against slavery. His famous quote from his sermon, Is it not a reproach to a man, Gruber asked his audience, to hold articles of liberty and independence in one hand and a bloody whip in the other? That really made some Southern white dudes angry. So they got a warrant for his arrest on the basis they said he was trying to encourage a rebellion. The jury acquitted him because in order to convict him, the prosecutors needed to prove that Gruber had a criminal intent in making that speech. Another well-known example of the prosecution of free speech, one they call a landmark decision that sets and sometimes overturns precedent in court cases, is Schenck v. United States. Now, this one is interesting because it ended up being partly overturned 50 years later when similar cases came forward during the Vietnam War draft. Basically, in 1919, two people were convicted under the Espionage Act of 1917 because they spoke out against the draft of World War I. And this became a landmark precedent, which gave Congress more latitude in restricting free speech during times of war. Charles Schenck and Elizabeth Bayer created and distributed leaflets to service members. The leaflet suggested that the draft was an infringement of the 13th Amendment and promoted slavery. This was the case that created the clear and present danger test, voiced by Supreme Court Justice Olive Wendell Holmes Jr. This case is where the example of shouting fire in a crowded theater comes from. In other words, if a person's speech, either written or spoken, causes a clear and present danger, then it does not count as free speech. Sticking with the shouting fire in a crowded theater example, this could cause people to be trampled and potentially die. Interestingly, after the conviction was upheld, Justice Holmes actually opposed further convictions under the same law. In 1969, a case redrew the parameters of the clear and present danger test, and it became the incitement of imminent lawless action. This case, of course, was overturning the conviction of a white supremacist, so that's cool. The quote that redrew the clear and present danger was, where such advocacy is directed to inciting a producing imminent lawless action and is likely to incite or produce such action. That is the current basis for the government to take action against someone for their free speech. This does not include private companies and their terms of service or right to refuse service because they're not part of the government. So this brings it right back to the beginning because freedom of speech is only a legal term in regards to our government, not private businesses or companies. This is where the freedom of speech does not equal freedom from consequences comes in. A private citizen can say whatever the hell they want, unless it provides a clear incitement of danger, like this post locally, which resulted in belligerent, unmasked attendees at a school board meeting. I'm not, I don't, I'm not offended that you're wearing a mask. I'm not offended if you like vaccines. So why do I have to change for you? I, I could care less what you guys want to do. So why should it, carry laws, man. You can't it's not a law. Person. How many times do we have to repeat this? It's a mandate. It's just some vomit from Jadolf, and it has no holding ground. <laughs> as, um, as planned, so I am not in favor of um, continuing without complying with the mask mandate. So be the conclusion of the board that it's masks not time for a discussion. I'm sorry, we're not having a discussion with the public. My name is Luke Dietrich. I'm sorry, Luke. I'm sorry. You are not. You were mentioning about our children. Will, I have a six-year-old daughter. I have a three-year-old son, and I have a one-year-old son. And I, I feel it's unsafe for what you guys are forcing down their throats. The teaching you're bringing them, the way you can wear masks, so it is unsafe and it is harmful to them. And this is wrong what you guys are doing. You're already going to adjourn and not let it be spoken, so I'm going to speak. Right now, before you guys take okay. home, like Howard, we didn't make it's a motion. I have no choice, there. but other than talking about the, the fear of your family, what about my family? I can't put my kids in the board right now because they crap your not making the decision to go on. Absolutely disgusting. In 16 days, are not Let them hang themselves. There was no mandate, and they were unmasked, and you sat here with us. 
That's the discrimination. A private citizen cannot, however, say whatever they want on social media if it breaks the terms of service agreements upon starting the account. It's a private company. Do I agree with that? Not especially, but I don't own the company. I absolutely agree with deplatforming people who participate in hate speech or misinformation that gets people hurt or killed. Hate speech most often, legally, constitutes a call to action. Genocide, eradication, looking for a white homeland, and false information like providing fake COVID cures can directly get people killed. The consequence for not following the rules means you don't get to participate. If you cheat in a game, most people don't want to play with you anymore, right? At the same time, a business can advocate for whatever they want, but that can mean they lose money. Like the recently lauded actions of an employee of Ernie's Market. She bragged online about kicking someone out because they held a position of authority at our local hospital and they upheld the Washington State Board of Health and the governor's vaccine mandate for hospital employees. This immediately drew some applause and some criticism. Was it within her right to eject someone from the store? From what we understand, she had the authority and the owner isn't upset with her actions, so yeah, she did. The consequences of her actions, though, is losing the business of the nearby hospital and anyone who was angry with the treatment of the man ejected. The hospital employs thousands of people, and this mini-mart is just two blocks away from the main hospital. Some people call this cancel culture, but really it's consequence culture. Just like the consequences of not getting vaccinated against the mandate for hospital employees was to lose their jobs. Some may say, well, that's not really a choice. But here's the thing about safety mandates and religious or philosophical exemptions. There's historical safety precedent to legally let people go who won't follow a safety mandate. To recap, the First Amendment is not a catch-all protection from consequences. No one is shutting down your ability to speak. You just might be deplatformed from social media because what you're saying is heinous, and that's well within a company's right, just like refusing service to someone. Both have the potential for backlash, depending on how upset you make people. Them's the consequences. So the next time you see a politician bemoaning big tech or some other privately owned company banning someone's account for not following their terms of service, which is very much within their rights, Make sure they know they're full of shit. Before I go, I just want to let people know that you're more than welcome to send me corrections and comments. I am not a legal expert. I'm just somebody who knows how to use Google uh, and can read. So I try and pass on those savings to you. <laughs> um, but if you're commenting and you're not sourcing the things that you're saying or your opinions are just rambling in the comments section, I won't respond. I'm not not going to bother um, because it's lunacy. No sources, no response. I'm not going to waste my time proving just how wrong you are in your anti-vaccine nonsense because you aren't going to change your mind. I know this, and you know this. I'm also not going to go through and delete comments either because you're free to say what you think. And honestly, the ridiculousness is great fodder for future episodes. Thanks for watching, and uh, let's continue to make progress. Hit that subscribe button to stay updated with us. And any sources we've used in today's episode are below or are available on our website at progressivedevilry.com.